In this episode, I'm going to share my five tips about what to do when you face crisis or some kind of a breakdown while traveling. Hi everyone, this is Istina. Welcome to my channel where I tell the whole story about my nine month solo journey in India. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. If you travel for so long, especially if you travel by yourself, there is 100% of a chance that you will face multiple challenges and have to deal with some kind of a crisis. Like I did, hence this video. I was going through a major travel crisis when I arrived in Hampi. To be honest, I'm not having fun. I haven't been having fun recently. I'm not in a mood. It was so major that after I went through it, nothing like that ever happened again during the remaining six months that I spent in India. Not even a minor thing. Everything changed for good after this one. Imagine you're exploring your dream country, walking around the ancient ruins, tasting new cuisine, meeting new people, being far from regular daily life problems. Basically living your dream because that's what it was for me and yet somehow not being able to enjoy it at all. With tears in your eyes, not even being able to comprehend why it feels so bad. That was me in Humpty. But something magical happened there, something that cured me from this situation and I'm going to share what by the end of the, this video so make sure to stay with me but now let's jump into the five tips that I have for you about what to do when you face a situation like this tip number one don't beat yourself up don't beat yourself up for feeling the way you feel allow yourself to be in a bad mood be kind to yourself be your best friend, especially if you travel by yourself. I remember I was hard on myself. How can I not enjoy my time here? How can I be so ungrateful? I am blessed to be here while all my friends living their regular lives. I am living my dream. How can I be depressed? What's wrong with me? This kind of attitude won't help and it didn't. It only gives you one more reason to feel down. It's okay to feel this way. There's always a reason why you feel a certain way. It's your job to recognize it. Tip number two, eliminate your basic human needs. Have a rest, get a good sleep, in a comfortable bed, have a good meal, drink water, breathe deeply, go on a walk. Eliminate all the basic needs. Maybe you're just exhausted. Ask yourself these simple questions. Am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Am I sleepy? Am I comfortable? Am I lonely? Do I need to move more? When I arrived in Hampi, I was exhausted physically and mentally even more. It had been the first month of traveling after I left my apartment in New Delhi so the whole situation was new to me, I was still adjusting as I was uh, budgeting and choosing the cheapest options I wasn't able to have a proper rest in a comfortable bed I was having only cold showers in those shocks I gave up on all those self body care rituals and literally all I dreamed about and I have it written I have it written in my journal that all I dreamed about at that time was to spend a couple of days in my comfortable bed with my laptop doing just nothing and maybe a couple of hours in spa that was all I dreamed about who knows, maybe a healthy meal and a massage is all you need. Once you meet your basic needs and you're still feeling down, then you can start getting to the core cause of your crisis. Tip number three, take it easy. Take this troubling thing easy. Reduce the pressure if that's your issue. You've planned your perfect itinerary and you're supposed to arrive in a point A at a certain time, otherwise you won't make it to the point B. Chill. Relax, you won't enjoy it anyway. What is the purpose of your 
travel? Is it to go to and see as many places as possible or is it to enjoy while you're trying to do it? Because sometimes it's impossible to have both. So it's better to give up on that next location. You wouldn't enjoy it anyway. Tip number four, find a way to express your feelings, travel emotions. This one is very important and it is crucial if you are solo traveler. Travel experiences might be so overwhelming if you don't have a way to express your feelings and share them with someone. I looked up to my journal and I can clearly see that I didn't have time to express my emotions, write about it during that time and that's because most of the time I spent with other people. From South Goa to Gokarna to the Indian wedding, I didn't have a space for me time, for a long time when, when I could write and express my emotions. Though I felt like I really needed it. You need to have your way to express your feelings, store your memories, to digest your experiences. For me it was writing and I recommend it. For you it might be something else. Maybe talking to another traveler, calling your loved ones, writing a poem, creating a music, making videos, posting on social media, whatever works for you. Tip number five, surrender. Make space for receiving your answer. All I said so far relates to this one. It kind of prepares for this. Make space for the answer or the relief to come. Accept what is and be open to whatever is going to come. Apart from all the obvious and rational reasons why I felt so bad, I knew there was something more that I couldn't recognize. If you feel this way, if you can't see a good reason why you feel so bad, then ask yourself this question. What is it really about? And I mean it. Ask this question. Say it out loud, write it down, think it, but ask it. Once you have a question, you most probably get the answer. If you don't have a question, the answer will not come. And I'm serious. So when I was passing by those ancient temples all in tears, I begged. I was begging the universe for help, for answer, for some kind of a sign. I begged for solution and I let it go. And letting go is also important. So the next day I went on a motorbike ride with another traveler. I made the previous video about it and I wasn't dwelling on my mood and my questions and answer. I was just, I kept myself still. And that was when the universe responded. So make space for the answer to come. This brings me to the story that I promised to tell you. At the place where I was staying, it was very easy to socialize with other travelers. We were hanging out at the restaurant, sitting on the pillows and talking. And there was this guy who seemed very spiritual. He was meditating a lot, he was holding his crystal balls in his hands or something, but it wasn't uh, weird at all because in India there are many people on their spiritual journeys. I didn't realize yet that I was one of them. Well, he had those tarot cards which I randomly asked him about and he asked me if I wanted to try. I sure did. I don't remember if I had to have a question before I picked the cards, but if I, yeah, if I had a question, then you might guess what it was about. So I picked the first three cards and then two more, which he helped me to like interpret. He helped me to, he explained what they might mean. I couldn't make any sense of those cards, but once he did, it was mind blowing. It was. It just blew my mind. It was incredible. So I was trying to memorize the cards that I picked, but he told me not to do that. Like he knew I was trying to do that. He told me not to do that because all of that was already in my subconsciousness or in my higher consciousness, I would say. To give you like a little bit more information where I really was at, at that time, I had this idea of this time in India, of this journey, that it had to be life-changing. Before India, I wasn't in a very good place. I was confused, I didn't know what to do with my life, I didn't know what is my purpose, what is the meaning, which way I should go. My biggest fear about this journey was for it to be just 
an awesome adventure after which I would just go back to the same confused life with no exciting goals and plans for the future. So I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't happen. That was when I came up with an idea of creating a YouTube channel. This was my idea of how I can make the journey more by taking deliberate and conscious action, like taking the control of it. But life doesn't really work this way and sometimes if you have an idea of something that is best for you, you might miss or something that life gives you that is really best for you. So I was, I wanted to make those videos while traveling and when I started to realize that it's impossible, that I could just film, but it was impossible to put it together and literally do it all while traveling, but I still couldn't let it go, it made so much pressure on me. So that, on top of that overwhelming experiences of the previous month, brought me to the point of a total helplessness and a breakdown and a crisis. As ridiculous as it might seem that tarot cards made me out of this crisis, of this situation, I truly believe, I actually know that it was the message from the universe, that the universe responded to my question. Yeah, it's just I know it was it. Only I know, only I knew what it really meant for me. It was just exactly what I needed. And I felt, I immediately felt connected. I sat there in cross-legged position with my eyes closed. I was crying. My spine straightened up and it kept on straightening up and up and up. There were people around. I was like crying. I didn't care. They didn't care. And I felt so connected. I felt connected to the spirit, to the universe. Today I would say to my higher consciousness and I felt so relieved. It was almost like I was intoxicated in the feeling of relief and I felt like I comprehend everything. I understood everything and I mean everything. Like I can't explain what I mean by everything and I wouldn't back then and even today but everything made so much sense and I knew that everything will be okay, good and better after this. It was such a relief. It was it was it was a real spiritual experience and it really changed everything. The next two days were my best days in uh, Hampi. I rented a bike which I wanted to do for a few days but I didn't have enough confidence. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to tell you about the next two days in Hampi in the uh, upcoming videos. So <laughs> I don't know if any of you would find those tips useful but I hope you at least enjoy the story. I'm all about trusting and surrendering to the universe. This story was one of my first realizations and first steps on my spiritual journey that continues until now and will never end. If you're still here, if you're still watching, I want you to know that I really appreciate you. I really enjoy reading and answering the comments so make sure to leave one, let me know what you think. Put a thumbs up if you would like to see more videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see you next time. Bye! You will find that intensity that you are searching for in simple things. And it is going to be like a breakthrough, but you have to let go completely first and trust your higher consciousness. These are just words, they might mean nothing to you, but they meant everything for me. At that moment it was the exact message that I needed, exact.